A eulogy or funeral speech is a chance to honor someone you love. It's also a great opportunity to help everyone else at the funeral remember their loved one and say a final goodbye. This can feel like a big responsibility, especially on such an emotional occasion. A eulogy should be unique to the person you're remembering, making it a very personal experience for those involved. I'm Jack from Proof. The first step in preparing a eulogy is to think about the tone. You'll want it to be heartfelt, but this doesn't mean it has to be somber throughout. A eulogy should also be a celebration of someone's life and their impact on the world. So adding some lightheartedness or even humor can be a great choice. Think about what the person you're eulogizing would have wanted. Second, pick what to include. Think first about major life events. You could talk about their passions, interests, or pastimes. To start out, pick a few themes or moments from the person's life that reflect their personality and the way you want to remember them. Speaking to friends and relatives of the person you're eulogizing is a great idea at this stage. You could even draw up a list of qualities that describe the deceased and find stories to illustrate them. Generally, you should avoid discussing negative things where possible. However, if you can't avoid talking about the person's difficulties, make sure you do so with compassion. Once you're ready to start drafting, think about the structure you want the eulogy to follow. Most eulogies commonly use a three-part structure with an opening, a midsection, and a conclusion. The opening should set the mood for the eulogy. One way to do this is to start with a quote or a short reading, or perhaps a poem that meant something to the person you're eulogizing. Alternatively, you could start with an anecdote that reflects the overall theme of your speech. You'd also want to thank the people in attendance and introduce yourself and how you knew the deceased, especially if the other mourners don't know you personally. The midsection will be the longest part of the eulogy. This is where you'll share memories and anecdotes about the person you're eulogizing. There's flexibility in how you approach this. One option would be to highlight parts of their life chronologically, starting with childhood, and working through to their more recent life. Or perhaps thematically, looking first at their hobbies, their work, and their other achievements in life. It really depends what you want to say in your eulogy. To end your eulogy, come up with a few thoughts that sum up the person you're eulogizing. This might be a reminder of what people can learn from their life, or perhaps the way in which they would want to be remembered. You could use another quote or reading that fits with the themes you've discussed. Finally, don't forget to thank the attendees for participating. In summary, most eulogies will have these three sections. Of course, this isn't set in stone. If you feel there is a better way for honoring the person you're all there to remember on the day, then do so. Perhaps writing a letter addressing the person you're eulogizing directly. It really depends on how you want to honor the deceased. Once you have a draft of your eulogy, set aside time to practice reading it out loud. You don't have to learn it by heart, but practicing will help ensure it goes smoothly on the day. There are three things you can do to prepare for reading your eulogy. First, make sure to read it slowly. It might be tempting to rush, especially when you're just practicing, but remember that everyone in attendance on the day will want to hear and feel everything you're saying. It's even necessary sometimes to leave moments of pause for silent reflection. Second, time yourself while reading. There's no set length for a eulogy, but around three to five minutes is usually a good standard. Anything more than 10 minutes might be too long. Third, read your speech to someone you trust. This will give you a better sense of whether you're reading at a good pace and where to pause. You can also ask for feedback. Is everything clear and appropriate? Have you left out any important details? Getting a second opinion can help you spot things that you've missed. The last step in writing a eulogy is editing. Go back to your draft and look for places where you stumbled whilst reading and make sure to make any necessary changes to ensure it reads smoothly. This might involve rewriting some parts of it, but even just tweaking the presentation can be a big help. If you found that your speech took too long when reading it, don't be tempted to rush through it. Instead, look for some places you could make some minor cuts. There might be small details that you've repeated or wordy phrases which can be condensed into a simpler word. Once you've made the revisions, you can then go back to reading it out loud again and repeat this process as many times as you need until you feel ready to deliver your speech. 
I really hope this video has helped you in this difficult time. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. That's it from me. Best of luck with your eulogy. And check out the other resources linked in the description to help you with your writing. Your writing, proof.